What's up, Forkers? It's your boy, Maddie. Worldwide. Uh, worldwide. And this is episode six, bite two. Thank you for joining me on how to cook with a charcoal grill. In this episode, I'm going to get into the ins and outs of actually using the grill. We're going to do some voiceovers on some videos and all that good stuff. So if you want to join me, come along. Let's go. You know. This week's party it is the beginning of summer and we are talking about how to cook with a charcoal grill this is bite two for an introduction of what we're looking at go over to bite one watch that wrap that up join us back over here in bite two I'm going to introduce the different types of fueling sources for a charcoal grill then I'm going to show you how to light it I'm going to talk about the patience necessary. I'm going to show you a technique I'm using for smoking. Then I'm going to show you the standard technique for, for charcoal grill. And I'm going to show you that you don't really need to use a, the most fancy, largest, uh, biggest piece of equipment to get, a nice, uh, to get a nice barbecue or get a nice grill out of it. Before we get into any of the grilling, let's review some of the tips I introduced in Bite One. Remember, the key to good charcoal grilling is to be patient. You got to know your grill and understand the airflow inherent to that grill. The, it's really that simple. These three things are going to get you where you need to go, and you're going to end up with a big, fat, full tummy of grilled meat. Here we go. No, no need to delay. Let's hop on over to the voiceovers. We'll start with the charcoal. Let's rock. Two main types this ordinary fork has got to be concerned with is briquettes and lump. Briquettes is that old bag of Kingsford you got sitting in the garage that you're used, your father used, and his father used. Lump's a little different. You can find that in most retailers, but it, uh, it burns a little different. It's not as clean, doesn't burn as even, but it adds great flavor. So if you're looking for something a little different, try lump sometime. Just to show you, I ain't got nothing special going on. Here I am. I got my charcoal, my lighter fluid, my little Weber, my wood soaking my charcoal chimney and my tools. You don't need anything fancy to get some real good grilling going on. I focused in on the hardwood at the end of that shot because I want you to know that there's a third way to heat your wood, although it's not necessarily the most efficient. That doesn't mean that it's not the best tasting. I like cooking with hardwood, but that's primarily when I'm barbecuing um, or for you northerners uh, like I am that's smoking meat. If you're gonna cook with hardwood, know that you're, you're probably gonna spend a little bit of extra money, but by God is the flavor there. And there you have it. That's the setup. Ain't nothing fancy, just a couple pieces of equipment and the fuel source. I promise you, I use this setup all the time to make delicious food. Not much more than about $50 worth of equipment. However, no matter the cost, don't be a jag off. Keep it clean, take care of your equipment, don't be afraid to get a little dirty. It's just grease and it'll wash off. Take care of it and it'll take care of you. My hot tip for uh, soaking, soaking chips is to drain them about 30 minutes prior to you want to use them. You want to soak them so they don't burn up too fast, but you don't want them to be too wet or they'll never catch. So it's kind of a fine line and learn where it's at for the wood that you purchase. Remember, Forkers, rule number one of ordinary forks is to waste as little as possible. So your boy Maddie doesn't waste any charcoal, especially with the use of a charcoal chimney that makes it pretty easy to get those coals lit. You'll see that here. You know, I'm topping off with uh, my favorite type of charcoal, and I'm never afraid to get a little too extra on that first batch. It's not going to hurt anyone to have a little extra charcoal. Also, you don't have to be shy with the lighter fluid when you're going to let it burn through. The point is, let it date that coal. Have it sit in there for a little bit before you light it. Set that couple's lava blaze and let it burn for about 15 to 20 minutes. Really get a good ember in there. Next thing I want to introduce is a little thing called baffling. On most charcoal grills, it's at the top and the bottom, and controlling the baffling controls the airflow. And as we all know with fire, airflow equals heat. So you want more air, you're going to get more heat. 
As we can see here, those coals I started a little earlier are just starting to get ember. Not quite ready yet, but almost there. Boom, and we're skipping way ahead. Like I said, I was putting in work on Memorial Day and I couldn't really get things timed the way I wanted them. So this was after the fact. That's what a good ember looks like. And as you can see here, I needed to heat it up a little bit. Don't be afraid to fan those coals to get them to the point where you need them to be. As you can see in this setup, what I wanted to show you is a proper setup for how to grill. Notice I didn't say barbecue. Barbecue's a noun. It's not a verb. You need to understand that. This is grilling. It's cooking uh, something over a grill that's sitting over hot coals. Smoking or barbecue is something entirely different. And I'm going to introduce that now too. As you can see here, I'm going to build what I'm calling a smoke bomb. For me, on a standard charcoal grill, this is the easiest way to uh, combine the techniques of offsetting, which I'll introduce, plus getting uh, smoke to the, to the meat. You don't have to worry about big chunk on this. You can combine a lot of chips into one tiny ball and use that as your offsetting method as well, which I'll show you in a second. As you can see here, what I'm doing is showing you that I use the center of the grill to offset the coals that I'm about to put around the edges of it. That's how I usually use my smoker on a grill this small. There you go. That's what the little explanation called offsetting. Throwing a little hip hop joke there because that's just how I rock. There's the good stuff. Now we got the amber we wanted. The coals are where I need them to be. And I'm going to get this party started. Layer those coals around my smoke bombs. Nice, even fashion. I offset the center of the grill, so that's where I'm gonna put the thing that I'm smoking. I'm getting this nice and ready for the yum. Ooh, look at that smoke. My God, it's sexy. That thing is a Playboy centerfold. That's how you get some good smoke off of a nice little grill for tiny cuts of meat. Now, you're not gonna be smoking racks of ribs on this bad boy. Unfortunately, that's not what's gonna happen here, but, if you got tiny cuts of pork, or you want to smoke some chicken, or a small amount of fish, this works out perfectly. Ah, so you were hoping for some meat this week? Nope. Episode 7. I'll see you next week there. Let's, let's close this grill down. Now, these things are hot as a mother, so you're going to want to use a tool to shut those baffles. You don't have to worry about dousing it with water. If you shut the baffles and your lids close tight, in about 15 to 20 minutes, those embers are gonna go out. All right, there you go. Hope you learned something. Just to recap, we looked over some charcoal. I showed you how to light it. I taught you the parts about the grill. I taught you how to set it up. I'll even tell you how to shut it down in the most effective way. Above all else, remember that using charcoal grills requires a little bit of patience but it provides a large amount of payoff, right? In my opinion, I got flack from my friends after bite one. In my opinion, I still think the charcoal grills are the apex grill. And everything else is basically just using the kitchen appliance. Eh, don't hate me for it, right? Everybody's got their preferences. I would be remiss if I didn't ask for your support like I do every bite. So I'm gonna, you know, if you, if you like this video, if you wanna hear more tips, and if you wanna keep going on with a little bit of blue collar cooking for the rest of us, right? Introducing these beginner level topics from an ex-pro so you can find out how to do a better job instead of watching everybody just assume you can cook. Like these videos, subscribe to them, and by God, share them with your friends. How else are we gonna get these, this, this juicy goodness out to the masses, right? You can catch me on all the social media platforms that I'm on, if that ain't obvious, but you can catch me on Instagram at that or Maddie, Pinterest at that or Maddie. I have an Ordinary Forks page on Facebook, and I am Ordinary Forks on Reddit. Catch me out there. So that's been it for Bite 2. We're going to continue this in Bite 3 when we're doing a small business showcase. We're wrapping up the week. We're introducing next week by chance. We're going to go over some culture stuff. I'm going to talk about local artists, local restaurants, all that good stuff. So for Bite 2, Episode 6, How to Cook with a Charcoal Grill, it's been your boy, Matty Worldwide. And remember, Forkers, it don't have to look pretty, but it damn sure can taste good. This is Ordinary Forks. Catch you next bite.